Hear the word of our Lord found in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Well, the number one cause of death amongst free divers is shallow drowning. They're down at the bottom. They get a warning that their air is up. And they reach for one more thing. One more abalone. One more lobster. One more shellfish of some kind. And then as they make their way to the surface, within inches of breaking through the surface, they die. One more thing. It's descriptive of our society today. One more thing. Death by one more thing. You see, but the solution is built into the fabric of creation. God rested. In doing so, and in doing that rest, he set a rhythm for us. Rest becomes the basis for work. We see this codified in the creative order. Work comes from rest. Even the opening lines of Scripture tell us there was evening and there was morning the first day. Most often when we talk about Sabbath, we talk about it from this perspective, that God rested, therefore we should rest. In a Jewish mindset, if you didn't rest, if you didn't obey Sabbath, you would in effect be saying, you are better than God. If God had to rest, who do I think I am that I don't need to rest? This is true. This is what Genesis 1 tells us. This is what Exodus 20 tells us. But today we're going to look at Sabbath from another perspective because Sabbath is so important in Scripture that it tells us different pieces about why we need to Sabbath, why we need to take rest. I'm so honored to be here. When Lisa sent me a message and asked if I could be here, I said, absolutely, I'm I'm excited because I grew up in Anaheim Hills. I grew up going to Hibachi Steakhouse every year for my birthday. (laughs) Little did I know that I might catch the smells of Hibachi if I preach for too long. (laughs) You know, so this is is home for me. I'm driving through and I'm like, Sizzler used to be there. Where did Sizzler go, you know? And and so super excited to be here. And uh, as Lisa told you, I'm one of the associate pastors at Shepherd's Grove. We're the new kids on the block in Los Ranchos. And Lisa was so instrumental uh, in, in bringing us into Los Ranchos. And really, it is just such an honor to be here and be with you. But when I asked her, what, uh, you know, is there anything in particular you want me to preach on? She said, well, I was going to preach on Sabbath. Oh. (laughs) Okay. I took a few weeks to get back to her because she said, well, you could preach on anything you want, but it it was kind of set for Sabbath. Oh. 
Why? Why why do I feel that way? Well, when she told me I had to preach for an hour and a half, I'm thinking, how am I going to talk for... (laughs) Dumb preacher joke. No, the reason it hit me so hard was because I'm not good at Sabbath. It's something that, that pains me. It's something I want to be better at. And that is so true for preachers. That oftentimes the message that we preach is one we need to hear. And I think most of us are not very good at Sabbath. It's hard to take a day of rest. Isn't that ironic? It's hard to take a day of rest. The world tells us that it's not okay. That we just, we have to do more. The world is so fast. Everything's going, going, going. What? If we get fired, what if we miss that promotion? Oh, look, you don't understand. I have to take care of my children. Oh, you don't understand. I need to take care of my aging parents. You just don't know all that is required of me. I have a six-month-old son at home who has come down with his first sickness. uh, And that's why he's not here today. Mama is actually sick too. And so they're both in bed. And I know full well... I have now this little creature in my house that depends on me for everything. What is it like to take a day of rest? We read this morning from Deuteronomy chapter 5. And as many of you know, in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments are found twice. They're found once in Exodus and once in Deuteronomy. And by and large, they're pretty much the same. But the fourth commandment, Sabbath, is actually the one that seems to differ the most. In Exodus, the fourth commandment, we're told that we observe the Sabbath because God rested. God observed the Sabbath. But in Deuteronomy, we're told something else. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. As the Lord your God has commanded you, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh, is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your town, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. And listen to this. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand, and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath rest. So the reason for observing Sabbath in Deuteronomy is that God has marked it holy. We see that in Genesis. But also that it's recalling the Exodus. Now, as Christians in today's world, we often don't grasp the significance of the Exodus. For the Jew, this is everything. Everything boils down to the Exodus. Everything comes back to the Exodus event. It is the central theme. We could spend weeks, months, years talking about the Exodus. But it boils down to me to one thing. That God is intimately involved in our lives and God is a God of redemption. That he pulled his people out of slavery. Slavery where they worked seven days a week. And he says, that's not how you were created to be. There's something else that's interesting about the fourth commandment. The first three of the ten deal with loving God. The last six deal with loving our neighbor. And the fourth one becomes a hinge. It becomes a fulcrum. It becomes loving ourselves so that we can love our neighbor. When we're not rested, it's hard for us to love our neighbor and to truly love God. Sabbath is so important. It reminds us that we aren't machines. Machines love to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you work in a machine shop or some sort of industrial industry, you know this. 
It's actually better to not turn off the machines. They like to keep running, but that is not who we are, even though some of us may be trying to fool some of us. We're not machines. Many of us neglect the Sabbath. We neglect rest. The Economist reported that upwards of 60% of people who have a smartphone are connected to their office 13 and a half hours a day. 13 and a half hours a day. Guilty. I'll be sitting on the couch with my wife and my son, and an email will come through, a text message will come through, and what do I do? I respond. I'm connected. I'm attached. Do I have to respond? No. Usually not. But I'm building these habits within me that I always have this device on me. What do I do the first thing I wake up in the morning? Unfortunately, I roll over and I look at my phone. See, who might have texted me? Who might have emailed me? What things do I have? And what kind of rhythm is that setting for my day? What kind of rhythm is that establishing? I was just marveling this week, and some of you in this room will remember days like this. I don't, which is the astounding thing. Remember when you used to leave the house and you were just gone? <laughs> I don't. I'm like, well, what if, what if I forgot to tell so-and-so that we needed milk? You just waited for them to get back and told them you didn't get milk. What a crazy world we live in. And technology is great. This isn't an anti-technology sermon. But look at some of the things that we really need to keep in mind as we establish healthy rhythms. So we're more connected. We're, we're, we're more engaged in this than we ever have been. Yet society as a whole is more stressed out than it ever has been. Anxiety is at all-time highs. Stress is at all-time highs. The world seems like it's about ready to have a nervous breakdown at any given moment. And in the midst of that, we gather here together, and you have some preacher telling you you need to rest more. What's the worst thing to tell somebody that's super busy and super stressed out? Just relax. <laughs> Just relax, you know, don't stress. Sure, sure, you don't know me. You don't know what I have on my plate. Sure, it's easy to just say, oh, just relax. It's not helpful. Instead, let's look to Jesus. In the Gospel of Matthew, we have this wonderful passage in the 11th chapter where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. In Chad Blake's translation, it would be, Come to me, all you overstressed Americans. Come to me, all of you who have way too much on your plate. Come to me, all of you who just need to take a breath. And I will give you rest. Hmm. It's like Jesus hits the reset button. He says, look, I will give you rest. So we come to Jesus and the first thing he does is give us rest. But what else does he do? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I love that. You pick up on this double understanding of rest. That as we come to Jesus, he hits the reset button for us, and he gives us rest. But then he says, learn from me, take my yoke upon me, and I will give you rest for your soul. I will establish a rhythm of rest. I will establish ways for you to continue to rest. We all know the farming analogy of what it means to be yoked. But how often do we really think about it? What does it mean to come to Jesus and learn from him? It means more than just compartmentalizing our spirituality. 
It's more than showing up to church on a Sunday morning and Bible study midweek. Being yoked to Jesus, you know, think of that image of yoking oxen together, shoulder by shoulder, one young, one old and experienced, who's walking together, teaching that one what it means to do the job. Jesus is saying, be yoked to me. Have Jesus be every part of your life. What it means to come to Jesus is to attach him to ourselves so that we become the kinds of people that Jesus would be if Jesus were living our life. That's what it means to come to Jesus. It means spending more time with him, resting with him. Jesus gives us rest. He calls us to establish a rhythm of Sabbath. And there's a difference between Sabbath as Sabbath and Sabbath as a day off. This is maybe the most important thing I say. Taking a day off And just calling it Sabbath is not what Sabbath is. It's not what the heart of Sabbath is. Because we create to-do lists. We create all sorts of things. It becomes the junk drawer of our week. We have yard work. We have that hole in the wall we have to fix. That sprinkler has been having issues. Oh man, we got to run the kids to get school uniforms. We got to do all sorts of things. And the next thing you know, our Saturday or our Sunday is just completely full of thing after thing after thing after thing. And then because we feel a little guilty about it, at the end of the day, we call it a Sabbath and we say, yes, I did it. Check it off the list. It's back on the to do list. That's not Sabbath. A dumpster day is not what Jesus is telling us that we're supposed to put into the rhythm of our life. Sabbath is about God. Sabbath is about family. Sabbath is about friends. And that's about it. If you're hanging out with someone you don't like hanging out with on your Sabbath, don't hang out with them. (laughs) Sabbath is not about being drained. It's not about about leaving that day feeling like, oh man, I had to hang out with her all day and I'm wiped. Sabbath is about rest. It's about being with friends and family. It's about putting the to-do list away. You know, unfortunately, we live in a New Testament world where, where Jesus has come and we don't have to be legalistic. For many of us, Sabbath is Sunday, and I encourage that, that that today is a great day to make it your Sabbath. We start the morning off worshiping together, remembering the Lord. You've got built-in community to go out and have lunch, enjoy a good meal, sit in a park, look at the trees, and rest. But some of us, we have to go to work after this, and that's okay. But find another day for Sabbath. Sit in a park and look at a tree. My six-month-old son, he's borderline obsessed with looking at trees. You know, I think he just likes the contrast in the sky and the versus the leaves. But it has, what has it forced me to do? It's forced me to slow down and to just sit. Be like, that actually really is a beautiful tree. I took him to Disneyland. He was more impressed with the trees at Disneyland than he was Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but I'm like, here, we have this list of things we have to do. And he's like, Dad, let's just chill. Let's just, let's just look at the trees. Let's look at creation. This is my father's world. All the imagery that's surrounding that opening hymn. That hymn was sung at my ordination service, and so it it has special meaning to me. And it reminds me of the thing that I need to remember to simply slow down, to hang out with God, to hang out with family, to hang out with friends. Hey, if if you haven't been doing Sabbath, and 24 hours seems daunting, start with 12. Start with 12 hours. If 12 seems daunting, start with 6. If 6 seems daunting, start with 3. I don't care where you start, just start. Because I think it will show and it will prove its value to you. Sabbath is, I think, in many ways a lot like budgeting. The simple act of creating a budget oftentimes has a net Realization of more money at the end of the month, some say upwards of 20% for people, just by being aware of where your money is going. I think if all you can commit to is three hours of Sabbath a week, 
your body, your soul, your heart, your mind are going to start craving it. And then that three hours is going to turn into six hours. That six hours is going to turn into 12 hours. That 12 hours is going to turn into 24 hours. You'll discover it provides energy for the work week. I'm wrapping up my MBA at Baylor right now, and it's amazing how many studies, and not Christian studies, Harvard Business Review, The Economist, Newsweek, multidisciplinary studies that exist about how by actually resting, people are far more productive. By taking a rest, by taking a day off, they're able to accomplish more in the week than if they worked seven days a week. That seems a little counterintuitive until you think, maybe God knew what he was talking about. Maybe God had a great idea. And the thing about, the thing about Sabbath is we don't do Sabbath so that we're more productive, but it happens to be a nice little reward. So today... Don't hang out with anyone you don't want to hang out with. There's someone in the pew in front of you or the pew behind you. You don't need to tell me. Just don't make plans to go to lunch. Put the to-do list away. Maybe you and your spouse or, you know, you traveled here and, you're, and you have this whole, you know, after church, we're going to get our church in. We're going to grab a quick bite to eat and then we're going to do this and this and this and this. I challenge you. I challenge you. Put it away today. Put it away. Go to the park. Go to the beach. Go anywhere where you can just play, where you can just relax, where you cannot worry about checking a to-do list off. And I think God will reward that. I think you'll find time in your week where those things can happen. Just rest today. Put the to-do list away. Spend time with those you love. Eat great food. Man, I love Jesus. Jesus is always eating. Uh, you know, eat, eat great food. Go to Hibachi Steakhouse. Go to Reunion Kitchen. Go to, go to what used to be Don Jose's, and I'm still upset about it. You know, go somewhere. <laughs> go somewhere. Sit under a tree. Have, have no agenda. And just be. Be with the Lord. Be with your friends. Be with your family. Be with the ones you love. Don't fall victim of one more thing. Don't fall victim of being down at the bottom and having that warning, that warning sign go off and, and grabbing that one more thing. Because there's always going to be one more thing. Remember, we're not machines. Would you pray with me? Lord of the Sabbath, we rest in you. We find rest in you. You call to us and say, come to me. All of you overstressed, over anxious, crazy to do list makers, and find rest in me. Learn from me. Learn what it means to rest. Learn what it means to establish a rhythm of rest. Because remember, I am the Lord your God who is intimately involved. In your life. So, Lord, I pray today that we find rest. I pray that we hang out with those that we love. And, Lord, I know you will bless each and every person for it. In Jesus' name, amen.